All right, welcome everybody in the Carolinas. This is the Carolina Association for, of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair brought to you by StriveScan. So um, we've got uh, five institutions here that you're gonna hear from tonight. Um, and uh, we hope that you stay for the entire session. Please know that this is being recorded. So anytime you wanna rewind uh, and, and hear again uh, from any particular school that's on the screen, you can always find that at the, at the link that you registered for this particular webinar. Um, so, you know, the Q&A function is live and active that you can find that in your toolbar. Um, that's how you would pose questions to our uh, college university uh, representatives. Um, they can't see you or hear you. So your microphone and camera are off. You see them uh, and hear them. Some do have uh, PowerPoint and slide presentations to present to you, and you'll see that as it moves forward. And um, the Carolinas Association um, has a few other sessions going on throughout the month of, uh, so you can check those out at the website uh, um, that you again signed up for this particular session. So, all right. I believe that wraps up all the housekeeping stuff that I have to do here. Um, okay, I am going to uh, pass the baton off to Elijah. I believe Elijah in Earlham College is, uh, is up first. So there you go. And um, again, welcome. Off you go, Elijah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Elijah. Um, I'm an admission counselor here at Earlham College, which is located in Richmond, Indiana. I'm from North Carolina and I'm an alum of the college. Um, graduated here in 2018. I played basketball here and majored in math education. So if you guys have any questions about my experience or what you can expect here, um, definitely ask me. But I know I don't have too much time, so let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, we are located in Richmond, Indiana. We are a Quaker school, but obviously you don't have to be a Quaker to attend here. We're roughly around 1,100 students or so. So around 6% are Quakers, um, very diverse. We represent 46 different states and around 54 different countries and also very diverse in ethnicity. Um, so, you know, around a 24% domestic student of color and then 23 um, international student rate. So you can definitely see a lot of diversity here on campus. Since we are a Quaker school, we do go off the principles and practices, which is basically respect for people, integrity, peace and justice, simplicity and community. Um, so throughout your whole four years, you'll be able to connect with a lot of people just because they go off the same principles and the same kind of status quo every single day. So there's no reason why you shouldn't feel comfortable on campus. Everybody here is to help you out. Um, they, they want you to ask questions. They always want you to be engaged. So never be afraid to ask questions. Um, as you can see, a distinctive community since we are around 1,100 students. Um, it, it's not nobody that you won't know, whether it's a face-to-face -face, um, basis or a name-to-name -name basis, you'll definitely know a lot of people here. And then rigorous academics that do challenge and support you in equal measure. So I'm not going to say it's hard to go to Earlham, honestly, but if you put your best foot forward, if you're engaged, ask questions, and really stay on top of things, um, you, there should be a, a smooth four years for you. I totally enjoy my experience here at Earlham. I'm still there to this day, um, so I feel like the community and just the people there, they're, they're, they're definitely helpful. Um, so here at Earlham, we have 40 different majors and minors here. Um, so you can see the list right here. Um, but if you don't see the major that you, that you see listed on here, you do have the opportunity to create your own major. And that's what I did with math education. So I talked to the registrar's office. Um, they kind of created a schedule for me um, based off of some introductory level math courses and some introductory level um, psychology courses and that kind of fulfilled my major. So there's a list of, list of majors right there. But if you wanna go into more specific areas, definitely talk to the registrar's office and they'll be able to help you out as well. But you have the opportunity to double major, major and minor, or you can just major, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. So with the smallness of our school, you know your classroom experience won't be that big. You have around 13 to 15 students. Your student to faculty ratio will be around nine to one. Professors, they want you to call them by their first name. And I feel like all that definitely plays a part of being the best classroom experience, just because 
you're always engaged. You have that time to ask those questions with your professors. You'll be able to make those connections over those relationships. So I feel like with the smartness of a school, you'll definitely be able to get the most out of your, your college experience possible. So this right here, the Earlham Advantage is gonna be talking about internship opportunities. And I think this is one of the biggest selling points about Earlham. So with the Earlham Advantage, you guys will have guaranteed funding for any internship or research experience you guys decide to do. So essentially it's around $5,000 maximum that every student on campus has. It's not a loan, it's not a scholarship, so you never have to pay it back. So once you're a student here, you're given this. So that $5,000 helps you guys out with your boarding, your transportation, your food, wherever else you might need to help you out with your internship experience, use it. Um, it's guaranteed throughout your four years, so you don't have to rush into it your freshman year. Um, you could wait into your, your senior year. It's normally during the summer, so around two to three months. And it's very flexible. So you can stay within the states, you can go out the country, you can tag along with different faculty and staff, you can do it by yourself. Whatever you feel comfortable with, definitely go for it. A lot of students, they try to go abroad just so they can get that experience. Um, but it's totally up to you. Whatever you guys feel comfortable with, do it. Um, you'll have career coaches and they'll kind of help you out and give you guidelines of what students have done in the past, what they feel like will be best for you, creating those budget plans. Um, so definitely use those to your advantage. Um, and if you guys have any questions about this, I'll leave my email in the chat below. Also that way you can email me at any time since I am the counselor for the Carolinas. Um, so here you'll see student life. So we have over 60 different clubs and organizations on campus. So really, there's a lot of activities for you to guys to be involved with. But if you don't see a club here, you can create one on your own. Um, we are part of the D3 level. So um, we don't give out full athletic scholarships, but I mean, we're very competitive in all of our sports and also financial aid as well. So if you guys have any questions about anything, just feel free to contact the financial aid office. Um, on re in residence life, we have eight residence halls. Most students live on campus all four years and literally all the dorms are right there um, on campus. So you don't have to drive five or 10 minutes to go to another part of campus. Everything is walking distance for you guys. And we have apartment style living. So we have triple dorms, double dorms, and also single dorms as well. A little bit about the missions and financial aid process. So we are part of the common application. If you guys um, don't know what that is, basically you just fill out one application. You could you know, click a list of schools that you want to send it to. Um, we also have our own application. So whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever you guys want to do, definitely go for it. Um, we require your transcript um, and we are test optional. So if you don't have the highest of SAT or SA, ACT test scores, you don't have to send that in um, and it won't be counted against you. So, but I mean, obviously if you have a high GPA and high test scores, it helps you get the max amount of merit scholarship aid. Um, and then one teacher recommendation, one high school counselor recommendation, and then you're good to go. Like I said, I'm gonna leave my email in the chat below. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I appreciate it. And thank you a lot for, for listening to me. Great, great, Elijah. So, um... Thank you for that. Um, and like he said, he'll put his information there in the chat. Um, next up is Massachusetts Maritime Academy, and that would be Rose. So Rose, you can have the screen now. Hi, everybody. I'm Rose. I'm an admissions counselor here at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Um, whoops. This is our whole campus here. Um, so we are a pretty small campus in size, um, as well as students. So we have about 1,700 undergraduate students. We are located up in Cape Cod, um, in Buzzard Space specifically, which is kind of right on the edge of Cape Cod. Um, a common misconception of us is that we are a military school, but in fact, we are not. We are just fully regimented. We're still a public university of Massachusetts, and we're actually one of six state maritime academies. As you'll see in a second, we have a completely STEM-based education, um, and our campus life, as you'll see, is completely regimented. We do guarantee housing for all four years, and our out-of-state costs for tuition fees, housing, meals, and your uniform is all around $42,000. So these are the seven different majors that we offer. Uh, the first two, Marine Engineering and Marine Transportation are our license track majors. Um, so what I mean by that is that once you graduate, you'll come out with your US Coast Guard license. 
and you'll be able to work on a ship pretty much immediately upon graduation. The other five majors are a little bit different. They do not directly translate to the maritime or shipping industries and are much more geared towards careers on land. Um, so all of them have flexibility depending on what you wanna do and you can definitely specialize within your major. So we do have this learn, do, learn philosophy where you learn the basics in the classroom and then on your required internship or experiential learning, you'll bring that to the table and then you'll take what you learned out in the real world and bring it back into the classroom. Um, so all of our majors do require some form of an internship or experiential learning, which is kind of like a mix of an internship and study abroad focus. So this is the regiment. Um, like I said, this is kind of why we get that misconception that we're military, but again, we're not. Um, there's no uh, commissioning. You do not have to enlist at all. This top photo here and they're all blacks is kind of what you would wear on a day-to-day -day basis. The regiment is designed to build character, build those leadership skills and also build the follower skills. So we teach you how to be a good leader, but also a good follower. All of the skills that you learn through the regiment, you take with you through your academic career and then your life post-graduation. It is a very structured daily schedule. Um, pretty much your whole weekday is planned out for you in advance, but there is a lot of opportunities to advance and get more experience within the leadership roles. So this is a little bit more about our campus life. We are a D3 school. We have 15 varsity teams listed here on the left, but we also have a student government association that'll put on various events all throughout, um, all throughout the week, all throughout the year. Um, things ranging from our annual Emory Rice Day to pop-up events, weekly game nights, um, all of that. And then also we have various clubs on campus, pretty much anything that you're interested in will have, or you can create really easily. Also, if you're interested in any type of band or choir, honor guard, drill team, we do offer those experiences here on campus as well in what we call Seventh Company, uh, which is one of our dorms here on campus. So this is the type of student that we kind of look for. Um, right now, we are test optional for fall of 2021 students, um, but these are kind of the average test scores in case we ever go back to using them again. Um, but our weighted GPA is about a 3.1. We really try to emphasize those math and science classes specifically, more so than arts and humanities. Uh, we do have our own institutional application, but you can also apply through the Common App. And some more ways to learn more about us. Uh, we do have general information sessions twice a week. We do have chats where you can talk one-on-one -on -one directly with a student. Uh, we have personal interviews with the counselors. So for all of you, that would be me, but we also have a virtual tour that you can take on campus as well. This is our website, it's pretty easy. Um, but with that, I just wanna say thank you and I will put my email in the chat right after this as well. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, again, um, don't forget about the Q&A function. It is uh, live and active. Um, and you can go ahead and post questions through there. Um, I believe, Jasmine, I believe you're up um, next. Um, that is correct. Jasmine, you're up. So you can have the screen. Thank you. Go ahead and start sharing my screen. Alrighty, I hope everybody could see my screen. But hi, everybody. My name is Jasmine Montaño Aguilar, and I currently serve as an admissions counselor here for Virginia Tech. Um, Virginia Tech is located in Blacksburg, Virginia, known as a gem of the Southwest Virginia area, and it's described as welcoming, safe, and connected. Our Blacksburg campus is described as a true rural college town, and here our students can enjoy outdoor activities such as biking, 
hiking, tubing, and fishing, just to name a few. Now, if you're not that outdoorsy person, do not worry. We have over 900 plus student organizations where you can become part of, and that could be anything from fraternity and sorority life all the way up to cultural um, organizations, business, dancing organizations. We even have a chocolate milk lovers club. So trust me, you will find anything that you can think of here in Virginia Tech. So Virginia Tech was originally founded as an all-male military institute back in 1872. Today, we are one of six senior military academies and only one of two public institutions that have a core of cadets. Our students are not all required to become cadets. However, if you are interested in enlisting into the military after graduation, or you're looking to gain valuable leadership skills to use at your first job, you can join the Corps of Cadets through two different tracks. One of them is a military track, and then the other one is a citizen leader track, which has no commitment to the military. Now, one of our main features that we do have at Virginia Tech that you will not see at other schools is our commitment to um, service and to each other as a community. Our motto, Ut Prozum, that I may serve, says it all. We do dedicate our research, our teaching, and our co-curricular activities to the enhancement of the human condition. Now, when I say the human condition, that includes people from all walks of life. We are very fortunate that we are a global land-grant university serving the world. So the spirit of Ut Prozum does live within our commitment to inclusion and diversity within inclusivity. This is a commitment and effort um, that we want to make sure that we're welcoming and including all members of the Hokie Nation to make sure that they are thriving and are successful. Now, giving back to the community may look very different for a lot of students, and that could be anything from doing research within your major, even socially becoming a homecoming king or queen, because all of our candidates run under a platform where they raise money, or even serving as a cadet here at Virginia Tech. Now, going quickly, Virginia Tech has uh, um, around 30,000 undergraduate students and about 6,000 graduate students, making us a very large um, research institution. We are public as well. And even though we are considered a large institution, you can still experience a small school or community feel, having your student faculty ratio of 14 to one. That means that you're in a bigger school, you get those bigger school resources, but you still tend to make one-on-one -on -one connections with your professors when you're in those major classes. Now, these numbers that you see here are for those freshman students that we have here on campus right now. They're not the most updated numbers just yet because we are doing those calculations. Some of the top majors that we did receive from those students were general engineering, business, biology, architecture, and psychology. Now, speaking of major, your success really does start with picking an academic major, and at Virginia Tech specifically, major really does matter. We have a total of nine colleges in a graduate school. Within our School of Medicine, it's actually located in Roanoke, Virginia, which is about, I would say, 35, 40 minutes away from us. And then we also have a College of Veterinary Medicine. That one is actually located here on our Blacksburg campus. So you really do have an array of majors. You can find over 100 majors within all of these schools and colleges that we have here. Some of the most popular majors that you will see is architecture, engineering. We also have very popular um, science majors around here. Now, if you really don't know what you want to do, but you know you want to be at Virginia Tech, we have an option for you. You can apply to our university studies program, which is our overall undeclared undecided program, where you come to us saying that you don't know exactly what you want to do, but that's totally fine because you'll figure out your way. Now, I usually don't recommend this to a lot of students because it is competitive. A lot of students think that it might not be as competitive as other majors, but it is competitive just because of the limited number of seats that we have within that program. So an alternative is that I always tell students at least pick the school or college that you want to belong to. So if you knew that you've always wanted to be an engineer, however, you just don't know exactly what engineering world or major you want to focus on, that is perfectly fine. You can apply into the College of Engineering as an undeclared undecided major and still experience all the engineering majors that we have there. And again, Every school and college that we offer here at Virginia Tech has that option for you. Now, quickly going over how to apply, we are part of the coalition application and the Common App. You don't have to do both of them, just do one of them and just make sure that you complete it at the deadline. The way that we review applications is more of a holistic way manner. We look at your academic portion and then we look at your personal portion to give you that holistic review. We wanna know what you're doing inside and outside of the classroom. 
And then going into your academic portion, we do require a self-reported academic record, so you will not be sending us your official transcript. We look at your academic rigor. For this past cycle, we were test optional, and we also do not ask for letters of recommendation or any resumes, but we do, we do want to know your extracurricular activities. On the personal portion side, we do ask you four OOP prosum essay questions. Within these four OOP prosum essay questions are almost like our supplemental essay questions. Within those, you answer them. They only give you a 120 word limit, and these are really critical within your application. And lastly, we do have some deadlines. We have early decision, early action, regular decision, and you see all the deadlines right here. The one I do want to point out is regular decision gives you space availability. So I always recommend students to apply early decision or early action. And then if you do have any questions for me, you can always contact me. Here's my email and I will put that email as well in the chat. Thank you so much. All right, perfect. Um, okay, so we have three schools left uh, to present. Uh, so. Uh, left, we've got Roanoke College, the University of Charleston, and then Missouri Southern State University. So in that order. Um, so Clarissa, you are up next. You can take over the screen. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Clarissa Oric, and I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Roanoke College. I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to get started. All right, so Rono College is located in the heart of historic Salem, Virginia, and just a short 10 minute drive from the metro city of Roanoke. We're also just 10 miles away from the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Appalachian Trail, the Roanoke River, and much more. We're also consistently ranked as one of the top liberal arts colleges for undergraduate research and a top 20 school for accessible and approachable professors. The town of Salem is your typical quintessential college town with lots of local restaurants around the edge of campus like Mac and Bob's, Elderberries and others, and Mill Mountain for coffee, and also commercial dining on Main Street such as Chick-fil-A and Starbucks. Within the city of Roanoke, there are tons of festivals, shopping centers, concerts at the Civic Center, museums, and more to get involved in, so there's a little bit of something for everybody. We also have the spectacular scenery of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which offers tons of opportunities for hiking, biking, and camping for all those outdoor lovers out there. Just some quick fun facts about Roanoke. We are a small private college with roughly about 2000 students and 46% of our students are coming from out of state. So we are very diverse uh, among with our large portion of international students as well. As you can see, we have small class sizes so our professors are very capable of meeting with students one-on-one, -on -one, recommending internships, scholarships, and they will even invite you to partake in their own research projects as well. We have no teacher assistants or graduate students on our campus, so our students are getting full access to our state-of-the-art research labs, internships, and much more. Also, 95% of our professors have the highest degree possible in their field. As for academics, there's lots to choose from. We have over 50 majors, 69 minors, concentrations, and pre-professional programs. However, our most popular majors on campus are business, psychology, computer science, public affairs majors like criminal justice and political science, and also our variety of pre-professional programs. That is just a small list, um, but you can definitely check out our website for more. We also have a brand new engineering science major, and we offer four, sorry, 10 different foreign language options. All of our programs are also interdisciplinary, so it's very easy to get a double major or a major and a minor, so you can really create your program as how you want it. All of our programs are also direct admit and designed in a way to prepare students for the rigor of graduate school coursework. So this next slide is actually one of my favorite things to talk about. So our core curriculum is very different from most colleges. Um, we actually make everything topic-based and we're only one of 3% of colleges in the country that do this. So instead of like your classic cookie cutter intro classes, such as Statistics 101, things are gonna be based on your interest. So for example, sports statistics or statistics of healthcare, or for history, you can take the mind world or chemistry, you are what you eat. So definitely it's a lot more relatable and interesting as well. Or you can pick classes around a specific theme. So for example, if you're an art or a theater major, you can create all your core classes based around the themes of art and theater, like Roman and Greek theater, for example. Our students are also guaranteed 100% to gain real world experiences in a variety of ways. Study away is actually one of my favorites to talk about. So I'll be focusing on that for this slide. You can either stay local and visit a number of like national parks or go to another state like for our Alaska trip, or even go to another country and study on one of our campuses in Germany or Mexico. We also have partnerships with over 50 different countries, so there's options for everybody. And with countless internships and research opportunities, you'll definitely be well prepared to go into the workforce or graduate school after graduation. There's also options for service learning trips, mission trips, and to even explore your more creative and innovative side. 
So I won't mention everything on this slide, but this is just a great snapshot of the companies and graduate schools that our students go on to after they leave Roanoke College. We also have a 93% job and graduate school placement rate within six months of graduation. And these are jobs that require a bachelor's degree. So don't worry, you will not be flipping burgers at McDonald's once you're done. But just to highlight some few, there's NBC, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Sony, Google, and some graduate schools such as Duke, Harvard, Yale, Notre Dame, and even more than that. Now for the fun stuff, campus life, there is tons of things to get involved in from our 22 division three sports, over a hundred clubs, nine Greek life organizations, which makes up 25% of our campus and intramural sports for some more fun level competitiveness. We also host guest speakers, movie nights and much more on a weekly basis. For our residence halls, we have actually 20 different options, which sounds like a lot for such a small campus, but it's really amazing. So we have a lot of different options for everybody from singles to doubles, pods, apartments, all male, all female, co-ed, and you can live anywhere on campus. So freshmen are not designated to a specific hall. You can live a little bit of anywhere. Or if you partake in our honors program, you can live in our brand new honors hall as well. So let's talk about scholarships. So do not let the overall cost of a private school scare you away. We have tons of scholarships to offer. So on average, most of our students receive $35,000 in financial aid just from Roanoke. So that's not including anything you guys might get from the FAFSA. So you can see it's a combination of everything here from merits to visiting to partaking in some extra programs that we offer. And if you're an international student on here, we do have a separate application you can file with us to get financial aid assistance too. So for an application, all you gotta do is first apply. Our application is free and you can do it on our Roanoke application or the Common App, either one is fine. And we only require your transcript as we've been a test optional school for at least five years now. So that's not going away after the pandemic. Letters of recommendation and essays are preferred but not required, but we do like to get a little bit more knowledge about our students. And if you do not submit test scores, that is not gonna be any negative impact on scholarship potential. So all our competitive scholarships are all students, whether you're test optional or submitting a test score. We also have early action, early decision, and regular decision. And we have explanations for all these types on our website so you can figure out which application option is best for you, or you can talk to me as well and I can help you with that. We are also still accepting applications for any seniors that might be on this webinar. And as for our juniors, our application will open up in June. Well, that is all I have for you guys. I know that was really quick and a lot of information, but I will drop a lot more information in the chat. This is my contact information. I am the territory manager for North Carolina. We are open for visits right now. So I encourage you to come visit. We have lots of virtual options as well. And um, like I said, that's all I got. So go Maroons. Great, thanks so much, uh, Clarissa. Um, okay, John uh, from the from U University of Charleston, um, you are up next. Great, thanks a lot. So my name is John Christian, and I'm the director of University Bands here at the University of Charleston, and. Uh, I've been here for three years and uh, I actually help the admissions office with recruiting, but on campus I teach all the bands. I also teach entrepreneurship in the arts and music for elementary educators. So I taught in K-12 for 23 years, so I understand the college hunt because I saw 23 years of college seniors go through it. So here at the University of Charleston in West Virginia, we have 30 different majors. We also have seven graduate programs that you can matriculate to into upon graduation. Uh, these are a list of our majors on campus. Um, I have students in our band program and in our dance team that uh, are in a variety of these different majors. Um, with our health sciences is a popular one with us. Um, we have five hospitals here in the capital city of Charleston. So it's an awesome opportunity for people who study in the health sciences to intern at a hospital or do their rotations and things of that nature. We have a children's hospital, a women's hospital, a cancer institute. So it's awesome. And if you're into anything dealing with uh, uh, political science or communication or things of that nature, we have lots of off opportunities to work with state, local and uh, federal government opportunities and agencies. So our curriculum is very, our curriculum is uh, fairly flexible, which is great is that we have the opportunity to do a whole bunch of different, uh, you can incorporate different areas into your major. So we just, we offer a broad base in a liberal arts. And some of our degree programs are actually a three year programs if you want to accelerate them, which can prepare you and get you into grad school either uh, sooner, excuse me. Um, in addition, uh, if you don't have, if we don't have a major on that list that I showed you or on our website, I encourage students to do a multidisciplinary degree, which gives you an opportunity to glue essentially the, the 
the uh, the core of uh, three different degrees into a multidisciplinary and then has a core project at the end, which is great. And for those of that people that want to do pre-professional, we have an MBA on campus, we have a pharmacy school, and we also have a, a master's in to become a physician's assistant that's also here locally. We're a small campus, it's very beautiful. It's got five classroom buildings and it also has uh, five classrooms and five uh, residential halls. We have lots of internships available. I love being here because it's a really diverse campus. I taught overseas and in Africa and Asia for seven years. And when I came here as a university professor, it was great to see students from all across the union, but then from 44 different countries. So, and even some of my former students have come to UC after graduating from their schools and which is great because I've had students from Germany and from Kazakhstan and from Morocco and other places. So this is a picture of our campus. As you can see on your right, that's our fitness center and sports arena. And we actually, our women's basketball team, all of our sports are Div 2, Division 2, except for men's volleyball, which is Division 1. But um, they just got into the Elite Eight. Unfortunately, a lot, they lost, but we both ha we had national ranked basketball teams this year. Our football team is playing this uh, semester. All 20 of our sports are actually playing this semester at the same time but we have a, a variety of sports that you can participate as uh, an athlete or you can do intramurals as well. So as for activity, we don't want you in the classroom all the time because being in the classroom is half of being in college. The other half is learning how to be an adult and how to, you know, uh, become a, the person that you want to be. So we have lots of organizations and intramurals. Like I said, I do the band and there's a choir on campus as well. Student government is highly active. We have about 50 different clubs. So there's wonderful opportunities. And even though we are a small city of 50,000, we still have uh, lots to do here. So there's, uh, we have movies and you can go shopping and lots of great eateries and things of that nature. So see here we talked about our athletics a little bit the other group that's been very successful here recently has been our soccer team our men's soccer team is uh for div two has won the national championship twice uh twice in the past three years so they've done really well it's fun to watch that on campus because you see there's with 20 different sports we have about five or six hundred athletes on campus but they're involved in a variety of different things besides just their sport Scholarship awards. We offer two levels of awards. First is your self-reported GPA. And you can see the breakdown there on the screen of the different categories. And then there are opportunity grants. And that's where, like for me, I can award scholarship for band or for dance or for color guard. There's uh, for choir and there's an innovation scholarship. And we have different other scholarships where you can obviously apply for and get to. Uh, the average scholarship package that people are getting before financial aid, before the FAFSA or outside grants and things of that nature is somewhere around $23,000. So when you have a tuition of $30,500, we're bringing your tuition down to on an average of about $8,000, which is extremely reasonable. So if you want to apply, we need your application and you can apply on the Common app or you can also apply on our website for free, which is great. Everybody likes free. Um, we can waive that application free at the very end of the application. Once you do that, we then can, uh, you get accepted. We can get your financial aid offer and get your cl classes selected and all of that. And then you can be uh, selected for that secondary scholarship. So we want you to come and visit us. So please do, you can see us, uh, you know, you can make an appointment to see us. We are under COVID just like everybody else, but we're happy to chat with you. And your rep uh, is Susan Will, but I'm gonna put my information up because you can, I can, if you can get Susan or you can get me and we'll be happy to help you. So with that said, apply today and hopefully you can become a Golden Eagle. Thank you so much for your time. All right, John, thank you. All right. Missouri Southern State University is going to round us out. Um, and I believe that's Torrent. You there? there we yes, go. I'm here. All right. Um, you've got the screen. Off you go. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for having me here with you all today. My name is Torrance Baldwin, and I am the Regional Admissions Counselor from Missouri Southern State University. I cover the St. Louis and, and Chicago region. 
but I was very happy to um, help my coworker out. So I'll be able to cover it for him today. His name is Jason Stockbridge, but we'll go ahead and dive right on in, okay? So it's located in Joplin, Missouri. So it's quite a distance away from you all right now, but right now we're at about 5,604 students for our enrollment. That means that you're pretty much going to get a small type of class environment here at our school, which means that you really do get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from your teacher. We have a class ratio from 17 to one. So just to give you a good idea what the environment is like. So the, the even the lecture halls are more one-on-one -on -one and um, you do get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention from your teacher. So the city is about 50,000 people. So it's actually pretty suburban and quiet, I would say. Um, it looks really great, like especially around the holiday season. So um, we have an art walk in the city of Joplin. So just to give you an idea of like what there is downtown and there's like a creek that's just a little bit away that gets a lot of people's attention. That looks very beautiful. Um, it's a very artsy kind of town. And um, I think that any student would pretty much like to go out and enjoy it. Um, there's malls and movie theaters nearby, bowling alley. You will be able to enjoy the things outside of campus as well as what's on campus. So just an idea of what the city is like. Um, but it is around 50,000 people, so pretty small. The school itself, um, I already mentioned, it has about 5,604 students. We have over 140 majors. And our colleges are the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Health Sciences, the Robert W. Plaster College of Business, and the College of Education. Our top five chosen majors are criminal justice, biology, teacher education, human I'm sorry, health sciences and, by, and business. So each of these are really great. Um, there's so many great things about them, especially the hands-on aspect, the part of it, like you will be able to um, be in those lectures that as you're supposed to, but you'll also be able to get started with your observations and your teacher education courses, or you'll be working in crime investigation labs within your criminal justice courses. and in laboratories and working in chemistry biology labs. And we have a, the human, uh, the largest human um, cadaver lab in our region too. So we're definitely getting students um, with the experience that they need early on. Um, we also are working with students getting in contact, working with at least three to five businesses before they graduate so that they can get that good foot in the door and then the experience that they need. So, um, some other programs that aren't mentioned right here that are also really good are our psychology and our theater and music and um, uh, computer forensics, but definitely things that are something worth looking into more at, with our school. So we have over 70 organizations. There's tons of activities to do, 50 to 60 events per semester to really get students active. And we wanna make sure students are able to come out and do all the things that we have. Eight bands, so we really have a lot of things like marching band, pet band. Um, we have uh, color guard, and then we have our orchestra too, of course. Um, we have four choirs, it's a mixed major choir, and then our only music major choir, they sound great. We have a jazz choir, they sound even like, it's just a lot of great music. They do their own concerts throughout the year. Um, so there's really opportunity to get involved in a lot of things. Um, we have 15 athletic programs. If you want to join our basketball, football, uh, softball, baseball, golf, track and field, cross country, any of that, then of course that's available to you as well. We're division two in the NCAA. Also, we're members of the MIAA as well. So we do a pretty good job. Our basketball, track and field and cross country teams really do get a lot of attention. We have 16 partner schools in other countries. You can go to any one of them and pay in-state tuition. So that means that um, you can really not have to worry about the prices that you would have to worry about if you were to decide to go to other places. Um, so it's a really great um, opportunity. And we're the only school in Missouri to participate in the National Exchange Program. So that means that you can go to other schools that are with the National Exchange Program for up to a year and get credit for the classes that you took there. 
So right now our out of state costs are about $14,923 for a year. Um, and that's pretty inclusive, like room and board as well. So it's pretty affordable for four years here. That's around 60,000. So it's not bad, but of course, financial aid and scholarships is gonna come in handy, just as long as you make sure you are doing the work to get those things. And then this little chart down here is to give you the meal plans and then the dorm options that we have available. They're pretty affordable up to as much as you're looking to spend but the room options are really nice. And then here is what you need to be admitted to the school. Also, we have our new merit-based scholarships just above right here. And then here's my contact information in the right-hand corner. If you're looking to come out any visit and visit in person, we have Monday through Friday, it visits at 10 a.m. and then Monday through Thursday at 1 a.m. And then I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. My name is Torrance Baldwin again, okay? Great. All right. Excellent. Um, I'm going to invite everybody back on the screen and we're going to do uh, just a wrap up here. Um, it's a 20 second piece of advice is what I call it here. Um, here's a question that they're going to answer for me um, and then we'll sign off. Uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process now? Um, so we're going to go in presentation order, which means uh, Elijah, you get first dibs at that question. The advice that I give somebody going through this college search process is just to be, you know, as honest with yourself as possible. Um, I think a lot of students, sometimes they fall into the fact of, or oh, the school has this, maybe they're known for partying, maybe they're known for their athletics, whatever it may be. Just be natural with yourself and make sure that you're, you're being honest. If you feel like that school won't really give you the best opportunity to be yourself and to grow as a person, then don't go there. Um, that would be my main thing. Great. Thanks, Elijah. Rose, how about you? Definitely want to uh, reiterate that, you know, just kind of take a look at everything, kind of figure out what you really want, uh, whether that's, you know, small school, big school, are you really focused on athletics or a particular club or hard set on a very specific major? Definitely take a look at what everyone has to offer and find out what parameters you really feel comfortable with and then keep going in that direction. All right, thank you. Um, next up would be Jasmine. Yeah, so I think like my colleagues have said, being honest with yourself as a student, also with your parents and telling them of where exactly you envision yourself being at. But then also saying that it's okay to ask questions. Usually a lot of students are afraid to ask us questions, but this is why we're here for. So it, there's no question that is stupid. Um, so take advantage of us that are here that can help you out in that process. Great. Um, okay, um, now we're gonna hear from Clarissa. I definitely agree with everything my colleagues have said. Um, I think one great piece of advice is just to be open-minded because you might be thinking you want a big school, but then you visit a small school and it's like, oh, hey, I actually kind of like this or vice versa. And definitely don't hesitate to ask us questions. We're all here to help you guys find your perfect fit. So ask us the easy questions, ask us the hard questions. We're here as a resource. So there's no such thing as a stupid question. I know everyone says that, but this is an important decision is finding the best college for you. And that's what we're here for. John. Uh, I would say, don't be afraid to do your research. You know, you just saw a six minute commercial from six different scrolls. And this is the beginning. You just got the teaser trailer. You haven't even started the movie or gotten your popcorn yet. You need to dig in. And if you find a school you like, you've got to, you need to, you need to judge yourself on like looking at the schools that you like and the schools that you don't like, because you're shopping for what you want as much as what you don't want. So, you know, go out there and figure out, you know, what you want and then compare and contrast as much as you can. And you'll, you'll eventually get the answer, but boy, all six of us are ready to help you. So don't be afraid to, you know, just because we're asking you to come to our school, all six of us doesn't mean we don't want you to be happy and healthy and be successful. We just want you to be at the right place. All right, perfect, Torrance. So my advice is to make sure that you think about your, the future. 
when you think about your college because it's going to be something that you'll probably talk about for a while just because it's a very proud moment graduating from college and it's nothing that you should really take lightly for a lot of people it's a really big moment for them so I think that you should just make sure you take into fact that it's something that you'll probably remember you know for a very long time so just keep that in mind as well. All right, perfect, guys. Um, I'm going to close this out. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, to our audience, thank you for joining us. And um, when you click out of this particular webinar, you'll have a four-question survey that you'll uh, be asked to complete. Please do so, so that we can make our program better for you. Um, the uh, Carolinas Association has more of these events as uh, as the month progresses. So please look for those on a website. And again, this is being recorded. Um, so you can rewind it, you can watch it again, um, if you want to, um, some great presentations and some some even better advice from our uh, six reps. Um, thank you so much uh, for your uh, for your candid advice. So all right, um, stop my screen, we're going to come back, uh, what I call Brady Bunch style. And um, I'm gonna wave you good night uh, and uh, let you all go. Thanks for joining us, really appreciate it. See you all later, bye-bye now.